I am weary of this intricate dance of geopolitical maneuvering. Do you realize how taxing it is to navigate this labyrinth? Look, I yearned for the simplicity of just enjoying a vacation without having to analyze the political implications. I miss the freedom of unplugging from the global news cycle. I am exhausted by the constant strategizing. Please, fellow pundits, take over for me. <coughs> <coughs> and I'm drained by all the spin and propaganda. You can take over my analysis. Please, relieve me of this duty. I yearn for the ordinary. Just joking, ladies and gentlemen. Truth be told, I revel in this world of geopolitical intricacies. Yes, it can be challenging, like navigating a maze at times. But it's also thrilling. Each news report, every diplomatic maneuver, all the strategic alliances, they're like pieces of a vast, ever-changing puzzle. The very thought of a vacation without the undercurrent of global affairs seems, well, honestly, a little dull. Who needs swimming when you can dive into the profound depths of international relations? The naps, they only serve to recharge me for the next round of insights. And the spin and propaganda, they are the hairballs of our profession, sure, but they also keep me sharp pushing me to dig deeper, to seek the truth beneath the surface. It's a game of intellectual cat and mouse that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So you're stuck with me, folks. Here's to more globe trotting and even more gossip. Let's continue to unravel the world together, one thread at a time. Let's begin with the music. I'm Atul Mishra. First off, let's talk about Asia. You ever notice how peaceful the Japanese are? They're like the chill grandparent of Asia. I mean, they've gone from being in one of the most destructive wars in history to being the biggest producer of cute cat videos. And their military is kind of like those fake fruits on the dining table just for the show. But all that is changing. This week, Japanese government discussed ways to restart defense industry to an extent where defense exports also become a part of the Japanese economy. If this happens, this would mark a significant shift from what has been happening for decades. Pacifism, that is. You know you are in a Chinese restaurant when the menu has more pictures than words. And you know you are in a Chinese colony when the entire country looks like a giant practice road for really bad drivers and where women moan like cats when you know what. Thailand is looking like that these days. Thai villages are being colonized by Chinese migrants who are pushing their language, culture, Huawei and TikTok down the throats of the Thai people. Thai Prime Minister Prayut Chanocha is sleeping a sound sleep. Let's hope he wakes up before he is declared CCP's Indonesia's janitor-in-chief. Pakistan is a very nice country. There is food crisis, water crisis, drug crisis, housing crisis, clothing crisis, social crisis, political crisis, and many more crises. You name a crisis and they have it. People of Pakistan have decided to end all crises by getting into a nice civil war, which will definitely be termed a crisis, but it's always better to deal with one crisis rather than 4,221. Let's talk about Europe now. Finland is US's latest best friend after Ukraine. US behaves like a really bad poker player. It keeps doubling down on bad hands, hoping that somehow we'll come out on top. It's like maybe this time our military might will magically solve all the problems. It doesn't work like that, sir. Anyway, American troops are going to be stationed at Russia's border, independent of NATO. This is happening for the first time. Finland is thrilled, but American forces can retreat at one command of the president. The Finns will be stuck when shit hits the fan. Prince Charles had been waiting to be king for so long, he had become a professional line waiter of sorts. It wasn't even like, dude, just take a number and wait for your turn. We'll call you when it's your time. The wait was virtually endless, but then came Listras and changed his fortunes. Now the world is cursing the poor old king for splurging money. Come on, man, cut him some slack. He has practically lived his whole long life for this day. The only sad part is that UK is now getting poor and getting poorer by the day. 
Postponements are like that slow driver in the fast lane. You're all revved up, ready to go. And they're like, nah, let's take a leisurely stroll on this road to nowhere. Zelensky is on Viagra and ready for some pumping, but Lithuania is casually postponing NATO event, one date after another. Getting the hint is a lost art, it seems. Europe is practically flashing a neon sign telling Zelensky, get the hint and give up. And Zelensky is still like, I wonder what they're trying to say. Maybe my funds are delayed, but I'll get them for sure. Nuclear weapons are like the ultimate trump card in an argument. It's like, oh, you disagree with me. Well, I've got a nuke, so there. That's the kind of power that Italy's Georgia Meloni wants as she signals the restart of the nuclear reactors in Italy again. Kaliningrad is Russia's G-spot, tightly guarded and highly sensitive. Poland's adventurous and ever flip-flopping President Duda the Dude has renamed it to Konigsberg. It is safe to assume that Ukrainian refugees won't be Poland's biggest problem in the coming months. Let us talk about the Caucasus and the Middle East. The GCC is like the Avengers of the Middle East. You've got Saudi Arabia, UAE, Bahrain and the gang teaming up to um, create mega malls. And now Iran is joining it. That's like bearded Batman joining the robed Avengers. And that's not it. GCC is creating a Schengen like Visa, making it virtually borderless. Taxes, my friends, are like a bill for being alive. But what if we can be alive without the taxes? GCC Visa is going to do just that to the region. A peaceful Middle East is in everyone's benefit. Almost everyone. Everyone except the US. Syria war was like that crazy soap opera that never ends, but it has ended and Syria has joined Arab League. Talk about a fortune turnaround. US is mighty miffed because Arabs were on their side. Now they are not. Well, President Biden, all Arabs are on one side. Isn't that cool? Trade routes are like the world's best delivery service. They bring us goods from far and wide so that we all can be lazy and avoid leaving the house. Meanwhile, Armenia, Iran and India are establishing a new trade route to connect Europe with its markets. But I'm confused. There's a freaking war going on and Europe and Russia are on opposite sides. And yet, they are building trade routes. The war, I believe, has reduced to fuck the Zelensky now and it's business as usual for the world. And no, I'm not complaining. Let's talk about the US now. California is a place where everyone tries to be famous. It's like, I'm an actor. I'm a model, I'm a screenwriter, I'm the director's under table pleasure buddy. No one says I'm a banker or a financial analyst. Looks like that careless attitude or some really, really bad decisions led to California defaulting on $18.5 billion debt, leaving state businesses holding the bag. Little did California businesses know that they were co-signers on the state's nearly $20 billion loan from the federal government that was used to cover California's unemployment fund shortfall during the COVID pandemic. Joe Biden is the human equivalent of a forgot password prompt. Every time he speaks, it's like he's trying to remember his own name. Uh, I'm Joe something. Give me a second. He even keeps forgetting that Canada is not a US state. It never was. But Biden's financial miscalculations have led to a disaster that's coming for Ottawa too. It's time for Canada to stop putting its eggs in the American baskets and maybe build a wall too. Biden, who is way past natural intelligence age, is trying his hands at artificial intelligence to stop and report Moscow's propaganda. That's a great idea. But who will oversee this shit? Biden? Old rascal comes to the White House every day and asks, do I come here often? The weirdo who loses memory for mattresses. He will forget Putin one day and then shut down the project. What about the money then? Trump and CNN, it's like a bad breakup that neither party can get over. They keep bad mouthing each other, but deep down they have this irresistible urge to talk. The orange man did it again. He went to CNN, roasted them and came back like it's no big deal. That's cool stuff. Well, folks, as we wrap up tonight's episode of Globetrotting for Gossip, let's take a moment to remember the glorious spectrum of our politicians. They are a bit like a box of chocolates. Most have a gooey center of corruption, but every once in a while, you find one that's solid through and through with a heart of pure public service. Most seem to prefer the thundering drums of war, but some surprisingly opt for the harmonious melody of peace. 
It's a bit like preferring Indian classical when everyone else is into death metal. And then there are those who just can't help but meddle in everyone else's business. They're like the nosy neighbors of international politics. But rest assured, there are still some who actually stick to their own backyards. So in this vast geopolitical neighborhood, it seems we have the good, the bad and the nosy. Always remember, just when you think you have got them all figured out, politicians will always find a way to surprise you. Until next time, keep globe trotting and keep gossiping. Good day or good night.